many of them are violent, especially in the arcades. Now that has some people concerned. In part two of her special report, Wendy Takuda looks at possible side effects of these games that people play. Wendy. Well, you know, one psychologist pointed out to me, in any culture, games, not just video games, but any games, prepare children to have the skills they're going to need in that particular society. And when it comes to video games that are violent, it does make you think. They come here almost every day, some of these kids, zapping, fighting, and shooting their way through quarter after quarter. The point is just to beat everybody up and win. He's talking about the hottest game in the arcade, Street Fighter. Yeah, pretty violent. Right. But not as uh, violent as uh, that Mortal Kombat game. That game's like you can tear off their head. And in the eyes of some experts, tearing off their heads is not the best way for kids to spend their time. There is a good deal of experience that suggests the more children are involved with violence on the screen, that their own behavior may become more aggressive and more violent. It's a way of our society saying to them, it's okay to shoot and destroy. It's a new question, so there's not much research on it, no statistical evidence. In fact, the kids say just the opposite is happening. It's all in fun. Would you rather us play video games that are violent or go out and beat each other up? It's better than getting involved with drugs or something, you know? It's something to do with your time. Well, you see a lot of violence in all aspects of life, whether it's in a movie, a television show, the news. It gives children a chance to see violence on a screen in their home, yes. But we don't see that as something that's negative. We see them being able to maybe act out their aggressions. Instead of discussing and negotiating something, if you don't like what the other guy does, you kill him. And uh, what we hope children will learn is that there are differences that can be negotiated other ways. There are no government regulations regarding video games and violence. But Nintendo, which is the biggest home video company by far, has set up its own code. It will not allow any games that it decides are excessively violent. We're pretty firm believers that you can have a lot of excitement and get, get a good experience in games by, without it being you know, excessively violent. The whole question is enough of a concern that some people are talking about ratings. The one idea that we, we've uh, kicked around is uh, a rating system for parents, much like they do in, in the movie industry, where uh, we'd be able to rate sort of the content of, of, of a game. They have worse, a lot worse things than what's on the video games in the movies. The movies are a lot worse than the video games are. And according to some experts, that is just the problem. There definitely should be a warning label on video games as well as on violent movies and, and violent television shows even uh, saying that what you're about to watch or what you're about to play can be hazardous to your mental and physical health. One local group is so concerned they're offering kids merit awards if they give up guns or war toys or violent video games. And if you're interested, you can call the Alliance for Survival. They're in Venice, and they are listed. Tomorrow, uh, are kids spending too much time playing these games? That has a lot of parents concerned, and we're going to talk to some experts. That's at 4. Video games these days. Research shows it's often time they used to spend just watching TV. And a lot of parents are wanting to know what those games are doing to their kids. Wendy Dakota joins us now with part three in her special report. Right. Well, what you are probably wondering is, is it turning their brains to mush? Now, we do know it's having a big effect. Just one example. Research done by Nintendo shows that more kids can identify Mario now than Mickey Mouse. But back to the mush question. We talked to some experts to get the answer to that. I got more than you. Ouch. If you have kids and a video game machine, you know the look. They get so involved, they do not know what is going on around them. It's the kind of total concentration most parents would like to see them apply to their homework or reading the classics. But for this generation, this is where it happens. What I don't necessarily like is that sometimes they spend so many hours doing it, I want them to go on to something else. There's other things in life instead of Nintendo. It's very isolating. And it's different from some other experiences which are solitary, like reading, where you have to contribute a lot. I mean, your fantasy and all that. Here, it's all there for you. All you have to do is push buttons. So what are video games doing to this next generation of kids? Well, a researcher here at UCLA says that they are learning something very important from video games. And it's not just hand-eye coordination. In every society, the games show what that society needs to prepare its children for. And video games are our the games in our society that prepare children to have the skills they'll need for dealing with this technological world. 
Specifically, Patricia Greenfield's research shows that video games teach very complex computer skills that will help the kids later on. Peggy Hildreth has seen the upside as well as a down. Her children both have an attention deficiency disorder. The games have helped them. It's a positive in that they're learning concentration. They have to learn how to control their anger. If I see they are getting too upset over it, I will turn it off for them. You got it last time, retard. You beat <laughs> You beat the level. Knock it off. <laughs> take it away. I will take it away. But I think social interactions with peers, with adults, with the real world, is the learning experience of childhood, which is very precious, and which is being more and more substituted for by this. Dr. Korsh feels parents should limit the time that children play video games. Other experts say kids need a mix of all kinds of experiences, and that every medium, including video, has something to offer. The future reading and writing are not going to be as important a part of education because um, not nearly as much information is going to come to people through reading and writing and it's going to be very important for people to be literate about computers, literate about television. World's changing. A note for parents, expert after expert we talked to was concerned about the amount of violence on video games and they suggest you choose games with your kids and choose very carefully. And the bottom line, as uh, one professor talked about, kids need a mix of activities to learn about life. Sure. And you have to monitor what they read, what they watch on TV, and what video games they play too. Yeah, yeah.